might be, I'm, I'm, I'm bound to just get her a little set up just for this. <laughs> Yeah. Did you hear that, Nana Dean? You can get a tablet and you can say, hey. <laughs> She's very shy. <laughs> okay. All right. Spotlight me. All right. Great. Hi. Good morning. Today we'll be focusing on joints and joint mobi mobility. So this will be a pretty complete joint mobility routine that you could repeat and I recommend uh, doing daily uh, because if you don't lose, use it, you lose it. And that is the case with our mobility at our joints. So we'll be starting and doing these in a particular order that's good to follow uh, for the most spacious results, which is really what we're after. So we'll spend a little time at the beginning, checking in, noticing how we feel, connecting to breath at the beginning. And then we'll step-by-step step be going into some simple ways that you can mobilize each joint. And <clears throat> although it's great to do them all together and do them regularly, any one of them that sticks with you for a joint that you're particularly uh, having trouble with, whether that's your shoulders or your knees, the more often that you can uh, find safe and comfortable and gentle ways to mobilize that joint within a pain-free range of motion, the more mobility that you'll have, uh, whether that's an increase or a maintenance, either way, it's good. <clears throat> so I'll go, uh, we'll do some breathing and meditating, and then I'll go into a little description of the, kind of the qualities of movement you want to be sure to have, and then we'll sort of roll through the exercises. Feel free if you have any questions to ask them in the chat. <clears throat> so as we normally do when with our chair yoga, just finding a really sturdy chair uh, with a solid base. You can have cushion, but not too much cushion to where you're sort of sinking into the chair. We want it to be a pretty solid chair. And we'll start in seated. <clears throat> And if you can, come towards the edge of the chair so that uh, you're not all the way back or slouching. And bring some conscious awareness to your feet. And rather than having your feet kind of any old way, think about having them straight out from the hips and then ankles straight down from the knees. And the full foot in contact with the floor. And then again, the knees are right over the ankles, so not further out and not further in. Feet solid on the floor, knees right above ankles. And then we'd like to have a chair height that allows for just a, a gentle slope in the thighs. If you don't have that today, don't worry about it. But uh, finding a good chair where you can really have your feet solid on the floor and your hips a little bit above your knees is ideal. And then feel solid in contact with the chair. <clears throat> And then bring your shoulders up over your hips and your head on top of your shoulders. So let's kind of use those general posture alignment cues. Notice how you feel in your seat. And take a few deep breaths and notice what your breath is like before we do any training or shaping of the breath. So using uh, your senses to direct them towards yourself. So taking your sense of sight and holding your eyes still, if possible, and using your ability to turn inward to gather insights. So noticing, oh my, Right upper hip is feeling a little tinge of something now, or is it a shoulder, or is it somewhere in your neck or head? Where do you notice tension? And to really release the tension is a, a job that we're doing through movements of the physical body, but it's crucially important that, important that we have a connection to breath and some awareness about the state of our nervous system as we're 
uh, trying to kind of get new vision for the nervous system of different areas that the body can move through and has the capacity to sort of inwardly see and feel and move. So we'll contain our mouth, if possible, closing the lips, so the lips touch, the teeth slightly part, and the tongue's on the roof of the mouth. Just gently placing the tongue there. So this encourages a breath that's in and out of the nose. You can just notice how that feels for you at first, if that's your natural way of breathing, or if it's different. Then over the course of just a quick minute and seated, notice the shape that your body starts to naturally take and apply a gentle effort to maintain as stability, <clears throat> as much stability in your posture as possible. So there's some activity to it, but not over efforted. And so with that awareness of what your breath is like and your body feels like as we start, We'll start to take a few more big and active breaths. So big inhale in and big exhale out. Do that several times. So noticing if your chest and your whole torso move externally and see if you can keep all of that soft and just have the activity of the breath come from the diaphragm and how you're pulling the breath in. So the diaphragm is below the ribcage and is the muscle that pulls breath in, contracting and moving down as you inhale, big breaths in. And in this case, we're actively exhaling, so pressing the breath out from the diaphragm. Keep going. So we'd like to, throughout our practice today, make an effort to bring breath in and down. So rather than a breath that moves here, it's moving as far down as possible. Just this action alone can begin to work with the stress levels that we're coping with currently. So think of that breath as vital energy coming in and down. It's worth your time, I promise. And then we'll begin with a, just a little bit of soft tissue work. So bringing your hands up to your neck. So noticing if your hands are a little bit chilly like mine and your neck's a little bit warm, just sort of get a little bit more balance to these areas. Just gentle palpating pressure from the base of the skull down the back of the neck and maybe even into the tops of the shoulders a bit. So sort of using your intuition and going into the places that feel tight and using gentle pressure from your hands to relieve that tension. So keeping the feet. And this is great for circulation and hand strength, as well as relieving some of the key areas we tend to hold tension that sometimes cause headaches or <clears throat> clenching of the jaw. Speaking of, we might just release that joint a little bit so you can just gently palpate in around the jaw, notice if that's uh, holding tension. And your alignment uh, starts from here. So by starting here, we're kind of working with the body in an efficient way. So anytime you're doing some mobility work on your own, going from the neck down. All right, bring your hands to your side and we'll just bring the <clears throat> left ear to the left shoulder. And just let that be a relaxed tilting of the head. And notice the stretch from the base under the uh, ear to the outer shoulder. And then take your right fingertips and reach down and away from you as you sort of gently make the effort to move the head in the opposite direction. And continue breath in and down into the belly. And as we move into our joint mobility work, keeping in mind that we're going not all the way for end range, so we're not pushing and straining, but staying just inside of end range at all of the joints and seeing if we can use the breath and the exhale of the breath to 
find a little bit more spaciousness at that joint. Good, and gentle broadening of the hand and reaching of the fingertips can add a little bit more stretch. You can reach a little bit forward, see how that changes the stretch or a little bit back. Good, and on an inhale, bring your hand up to your thigh and your head back to the center and switch directions. And noticing different side to side in your capacity to turn your, tilt your head. And then reaching the left fingertips down and away, big deep breaths, fill the torso and soften on the exhale. Maybe reaching a little back or a little forward. And stay just inside of end range. And maintaining as best you can all the alignments that we initially established the feet and the knees, the hips and the shoulders. And the head is still on top, but tilted to the side. Good, one more deep breath. Inhale and exhale. So you have the ear can move a little closer to the shoulder and then the inhale, bring head back up to center. And now we'll move in a breath connected way, inhaling, head comes up as high as you can, exhaling, head looks down. So by breath connected, I mean one breath, one movement. So in this case, exhaling, head tilts down, inhaling, head tilts up. So as you continue to move, deepening the connection between your movement and your breath, making their pace match, and at the end of each movement, ensuring that you're just slightly inside of end range. So you're feeling a stretch, but not moving into any strain or pain. And these um, foundational principles move with us as we go into all of our different joints. So we're staying just inside of end range. We're moving in a way that's deeply connected to the breath. This is one of the ways that this becomes a meditative practice. So your whole self, your mind, and your attention are here in the present moment. And this is what begins to free us from worry. Good. And each joint beginning to notice as you warm up the joint a bit and get some movement at each place, do you notice a gentle increase in range of motion and how far you can look up or how far you can look down? The mobility of your neck is crucially important to the strength of your core. So being able to look up and get pretty close to face parallel with the ceiling and able to look down pretty close to the face parallel with the floor is sort of the mobility standard that I look for in my clients before we begin to work on anything else besides neck mobility. It's that important. If you find yourself bored, just ground again into your mind and breath being one thing. Then the next time you exhale, bring your head to a level. And release the shoulders, shake them out. You can bring your hands to the side and just release any tension through the tops of the shoulders or the wrists. <laughs> and now we'll turn the head. So we've tilted, we've gone up and down. Now we'll turn to look over the <clears throat> left shoulder on an inhale, on an exhale, back to center. Inhale, over the left shoulder. Exhale, back to center. So again, not pressing into your body, no rotation through the upper chest, everything happens at the neck and simply honoring how far you're able to go. One of the really helpful things that yoga has taught me is how to just be where I'm at, how to work within the capacity that I currently have. And from there, little by little, gently, you see progress and change. If your breath kind of gets uh, mixed up, just take a pause and center and inhale and exhale and then inhale to turn. 
Exhale back to center. You can pay attention to your eyes and scan the room as you turn your head and then look with your eyes to the furthest point that you can. So even if your head stops, your eyes turn further to look back behind you. Good. And next time you come back to center, pause there. Take the shoulders out and then on an inhale, bring the palms facing up, elbows slightly bent. So Palms are broadened and your, you know, whether your arms can come here comfortably or here, that's all fine. But trying to bring the <clears throat> shoulders and uh, palms to be at the same level. We'll turn the left hand towards the front and then around. And turn the opposite way at the same time. So you're turning away from the hand that you're looking or that you're twisting. And then inhaling, everything comes back to center. Rotate the hand forward. I sometimes call this one the armpit sniff because you're ducking your head towards your armpit and then inhale back up to center. So this is moving the whole shoulder and neck complex all at once. It takes a little coordination. So once you get everything all synced up, you're rotating the hand you're turning away from using all those little rotator muscles in the shoulder, again, staying just inside of end range keeping the lower body stabilized. Exhaling to turn, inhaling back up to center. Notice the ways that your alignment changes in the feet or the lower body. And just again and again, come back to that stable center. One more time each side, finding end range. Notice building strength and capacity in the shoulders. And then come back to center and let the arms go, shake them out, release. Good job. And we'll take a few deep breaths in and down and, and this resting position. And just notice the difference in the way your neck and shoulders feel since the beginning of class. One of the most important parts about doing all these mo movements is feeling what's happening and feeling the benefits. That's how it can really become something that sticks in your routine and serves you long term. We'll now make an effort to move this thoracic area so the upper back and shoulders. And we'll just do a simple cat-cow-like action. So as you inhale, present the chest forward, pull the shoulders back. And as you exhale, arch, especially through the mid back and try to broaden the back area. I'll turn to the side so you can really see where I'm moving, squeezing the shoulders behind me as I present chest and inhale and exhale. Not as much movement down here as broadening the upper back. You can use your hands on your knees to keep that more stabilized and just keep moving back and forth as best you can, isolating this area of the upper back. What tends to happen is we get a bit frozen in this area, unable to move the scapula, the shoulders, or the <clears throat> chest. Keep going. Okay, and make that action smaller and smaller and come to center, finding where you can align your rib cage right over your hip bones. <clears throat> and then we'll release the hands down and just move at the shoulder socket. So both shoulders come forward, and then up and then back and around. You can hold the shoulders if you want, we'll keep the arms down, as much range of motion in the shoulder socket as you can. 
This one tends to be a little noisy, but just know that you're still getting benefit if you're going through a pain-free and noise-free range of motion. It's bringing synovial fluid to the joint just by having this movement happen at the joint that will uh, make all the movements of your joints smoother. If you have any kind of arthritis in any area, do work around that. So it's like you're finding a pathway around the shoulder that is gently pain-free to move through. So pushing into that pain or strain or difficulty doesn't actually create more space at the joint or more mobility. So matching the movement to breath. And moving the other way. So moving back first and squeezing the shoulder blades and then lifting up from the top of the shoulder and back. last moments and then starting to make the circle that you're creating or whatever shape it happens to be that's pain free in the shoulder into a spiral so circling towards the center making each movement but a little smaller than the last and then stabilizing your shoulder socket at its <sighs> center good and then we'll take a few more of those cat cows and then in the next move sideways action. So your chest is presenting forward and back. So there's this rotating motion. And we're trying to it's the thoracic moving. So it's not as much the lower body as the rib cage rotating on top. <clears throat> so this movement of the thoracic and not the lumbar or the cervical is again breaking up all the density of tissue that we develop here. So even if your movement's very small, but it's really honestly only moving the thoracic, that's better than some big movement that compensates in his movement in the lower back. Good, and switching directions. So this could be a good to try in the, the mirror on your own a few times to see if you can start to feel uh, just this area is moving because what will happen is the head will want to do it too. But if it's just this area, we're getting all the benefit, even if it's just a small movement. Okay. And so again, start to make your circle into a spiral towards the center. Feel all those thoracic vertebrae stack one on top of another and relax your shoulders slightly back and down. So you're activating the muscles of the upper back to keep from your uh, <clears throat> all of this uh, work that we've been doing to open the thoracic from going right into that habitual posture. So pull the shoulders back and use the scapula to pull them down. So your back muscles are on to hold up this posture. This may be difficult or tiring at first, but it will start to build your capacity over time these back muscles. Okay, holding that position, we'll bring the hands down to the side and we'll reach back as far as you can. So again, try not to let the chest move too far forward, let the rotation happen at the shoulder and then you're coming up and in front. Inhale, reaching through the back range of motion. Exhale down and forward through the front. pain for you, available range of motion. So if that means moving more like this to find an uh, area that doesn't pop or click or cause pain, then that's your perfect range of motion. So strengthening the shoulder and mobilizing the shoulder at the same time through finding your capacity. Good, and then when your hands come down the next time, shake them out, bend at the elbow, face the palms up, and we'll open 
both arms out to the side. You have a tray in each hand. You're holding the palm up and then close. Open and close. And again, we're moving the little rotator muscles of the shoulder, which don't seem important until they're injured and they can be so painful. So again, whatever range of motion is possible in a pain-free way here. Feet stay stable. Notice what parts of your body have a tendency to fidget or uh, <clears throat> wiggle or move unconsciously. And just do your best to continually stabilize in that area. But also don't obsess, obsess about it. If it moves or wiggles a bit, just allow it and notice it. So breath is really filling as you open up and emptying as you close. Good, and then hand facing forward. We'll bend the elbow and create a fist with the hand as we bend completely, and then open the hand as we move through the back range of motion. So fist, and then open. So connecting the movement of all the joints and working the shoulder extension so that back range of motion as far back as you can without movement happening in the chest. Inhale, and then exhale. Good, and next time your arms are down and back, release, shake out the arms. And we'll just take a few minutes to, again, a few minutes, a few moments to take a few deep breaths and notice the effect in the shoulders and the thoracic from these movements so far, maybe the chest. You can really tell if there's more spaciousness by taking a few big deep breaths. Noticing if any shifts have happened since the beginning of class about where you're experiencing pain or strain or how your breath is moving. And we'll press through the feet and come to standing in a relaxed way. I'm going to move my chair so you can see me, but you can just walk around back behind your chair. And your hands are on the back of your chair. And as best you can, your joints are stacked in a single line. And we'll be moving in and out of the arms overhead. So walking backwards, the torso comes forward. However far you can, bring the arms into an overhead position and then walking back. Inhale. Exhale. Or if you need to have a couple of breaths per movement, that's okay also. So finding where you don't have to dip the chest forward, but just where your arms are overhead and your spine is getting some lengthening and extension. And you can hold in that position for a few breaths if you'd like. Keep going. So we're warming up the hips also, bringing the hips into <clears throat> Some extension in this position and some flexion in this position, as well as bringing the arms into an overhead position, which is really helpful for head and neck and shoulder alignment. Good. Next time that you Walk back. We'll pause here. So if you have any trouble bring, when you bring your hand, uh, head <clears throat> below your heart, or if you have untreated high blood pressure or high blood pressure in general, staying a little bit up higher might be good. But if it feels okay, getting some full extension on the spine and bringing the arms up overhead. And a few deep breaths here. And then inhaling, walking forward. Keep 
and the hands on the chair will move into a little bit more hip work <clears throat> by bringing your left foot back. Both toes stay pointed towards the chair. So there's tendency sometimes to turn out. Keep both toes pointed towards the chair and you're only stepping back as far as you can that you can keep both hips pointing towards the chair. So if your hip opens, that's too far, just step a little closer in. So we're still completely facing the chair. <clears throat> and using the chair for support, we'll bend at the elbow and bring the torso down. Spine stays <clears throat> uh, lengthened, so we're not letting the head and shoulders dip forward. So the whole back body's on. And inhale back up to the start. Exhale and inhale. So you're using the chair as little as possible. It's there for support, but we're hinging at the hip. If you find you can take your back leg a little further back. This is stretching through the calf and the back of the thigh and the front leg. Calf and the back leg. Match the movement to your breath. Be sure not to lock out the knees. Keep a soft, gentle bend in the knee. Good, and then next time you come forward, look down at your foot and really see an activated foot. And notice if your knee is in, a, in between your hip and your ankle, and then bend the knee and straighten the knee. Bend the knee, straighten the knee. Notice if you activate the foot down more. So if you've been in class before, you've heard me talk about the four corners of the foot. If you ground the foot, that can help make for, believe it or not, a silent bending of the knee because of the activation of the foot and the hip. And it's lots of strength here, stretching through the back leg, support from the chair. Good. Next time you bend, hold there, and take as much help from the chair as you need, or maybe you don't need any help from the chair. Good. And on your next inhale, extend through the spine and step the back foot forward. Just notice the different side to side, bend the knees a bit. And then we'll take the right foot back, <clears throat> same distance, toes point forward, front leg is straight. So however far apart you need your feet to be to feel stable, that's perfect. <clears throat> so they could be as wide as the chair or more narrow if you feel balanced. And then <clears throat> extending through the spine, exhaling, bend at the elbows, with the support of the chair, inhaling, come up. Slight bend in the knee, activating the feet down. So again, not letting the head lead the way, but using the muscles of the back of the neck and the upper back to keep the head and shoulders in alignment with the rest of the spine. And this will build strength and endurance in those muscles, as well as releasing the hip and the calf. building strength and stability in the legs. Good, next time you come down and you're looking at your foot and your knee, bend and straighten. And the more active your foot is and the more stable your hip is, the more it will support the knee bending and straightening. The knee is a hinging joint. So looking down in this position, you can see, is there any side to side motion that's habituated that might be causing you some knee pain. These movement patterns are a key part of becoming pain-free. So understanding the ways that you're moving your joints that might be causing more wear and tear than necessary. The low back is supported by the low belly being on. And next time you bend, hold, you can use the support of the chair or no support, depending how you're feeling. Good, and 
<clears throat> pressing through the front leg, coming back up to standing, shaking out the knees a little bit. <clears throat> we'll face forward in standing and bring your hands to your hips. And we'll just do the feet a little bit wider than hip width apart, some hip circles. So pressing the hips forward and then out to the side and back and around. So feeling for the areas that got fatigued during those few supported standing poses and seeing if you can find a way to get some movement into that area. Good, and switching directions. And the other way. Good, and making your spiral into a circle towards the center, and we'll bring some focus into our alignment. <clears throat> so the feet are right underneath the knees, hips are right above that, and then there's an action of lifting the front hip bones and turning on the glute muscles and the low belly muscles to align the pelvis. We'll see if we can hold on to that. I could do a whole class on just this alone, but <clears throat> it's really important that the glutes are on as a way to extend the hips to support the lower back. So we'll bring a hand, hands to the hips and then an inhale, really like you're pressing from the hip, reach up and over. And then back to center, up and over. So if your shoulder part, part of this is bothering you, <clears throat> just do the hips. But we're trying to get some space in the top of the hip, in the sides of the hip. Soft bend in the knee, arm overhead if you'd like. Lengthen through the base of the <clears throat> torso where it connects into the hip. Good, and last time, each side, back to center. We'll use the support of the chair to do a little uh, hip <clears throat> flexion, and then back to standing and switching sides. So we're shifting the weight side to side, bringing the knee as close up towards the abdomen as you can. Foot stays flexed and feeling weight shift side to side. Use as much support from the chair as you need and go as slow as you need. I have a little crying puppy dog at the moment, if you can hear her. <laughs> Good, last time. In and down. And if you have a way to pay attention to see how is your hip, knee, and ankle tracking. So that if you have a tendency for the knee to go in, or the need to go out, all of that is going to have consequences in the joints. <clears throat> and so we're trying to find efficient, effective ranges of motion and training them in. Okay, both hands, both feet down, and we'll come in a relaxed way back to seated, seeing if as you come into seated, you can do so really utilizing all the muscles and sitting down in a conscious way. And then <clears throat> placing the feet flat on the floor. We'll pull the knee in towards the chest and hold it with the arms while we circle the ankle. So we'll release the ankle joint. And really using the arm muscles, building some strength in the upper body. And switch directions. Pointing the toe and flexing the foot as you circle around. Good. And then using the control from the hip to place the foot down and control from the hip to lift up the other leg. Interlace the fingers the <clears throat> opposite way you did on the last foot and circle the ankle. Uh, 
pointing the toe and flexing the foot. So releasing the calf right. as you release the ankle also. Right. And switching direction. Good. And then <clears throat> using the hip, we set the foot down and I have a walk destined in my future. Do this morning walk. <clears throat> Take all your posture alignments, feet, knees, hips, shoulders are on top of your hips. You can take a few shoulder rolls to find where the center of your shoulder joint is, where the back muscles are helping to support. And then <clears throat> hands rest gently on your thighs, head on your shoulders. Now we'll take a few deep breaths, just noticing for any shifts since the beginning of class. So notice if you're able to bring more breath in and down, seeing if you could bring, feel as though breath is coming all the way down into the pelvis. And then as you exhale, emptying completely. We'll take <clears throat> 10 deep meditative breaths together. So if you've been interested in meditation and would like to start, one of the best uh, ways to help your mind and attention stay present, which is really what meditation is all about, you can bring your thumb and your first finger together and take an inhale and an exhale. And then move your thumb to your second finger. Inhale, deep, low, breath comes in and down. And an exhale. And then inhale, third finger and thumb connect. And exhale. And then pinky finger and thumb connect. And then heading back the way you came. Thumb and third finger. Thumb and second finger. So this keeps the mind and attention grounded in the activity of the body and the connection of the mind and the breath. You can have the eyes open or closed. And you can ground your attention in your sense of touch, really sensitively feeling your thumb and finger come together. Maybe the air on your fingertips as they separate. How much about this present moment can you be aware of with your senses? Good. So you can continue with this practice if you like. I recommend trying for five or so minutes a day to just be doing nothing but being with your breath and your mind and attention in the present moment. And when you make your way back to your first finger, well, <clears throat> I'll invite you, if you'd like to bring your hands to your heart in some way, or just bring your attention to your heart, either way, and take a few deep breaths of gratitude. So such a powerful energy. Inhaling as though you're filling up with gratitude for the capacity of your body right now. And exhale any doubt, or fear, or worry, inhale gratitude, and enjoy your beautiful day. Thank you all so much, and I hope to see you next week. Mm -hmm.